bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi everybody, Dan Oman, Mike Beer for Breeders' Cup Prep Recap. In this edition, we're going to take a look back at the Midsummer Derby at Saratoga. The grade one run Happy Travers and the best three-year-old dirt male in the country, Epicenter, took center stage. We break from the gate, Epicenter post six, sometimes doesn't get away well. He got away better in this race, Mike, and took up a good stalking position. Yeah, he did. You're right. It was it was nice to see him get out of the gate uh, cleanly this time. And he's just, he just lands a perfect trip in this race, Dan. Rosario took a pretty good hold of him there. And the first run through the stretch got him right over to track in behind the pace setter cyber knife. And he just sits in there for as long as he can, Dan. And when he comes clear, um, it's really no kind of, it looked like maybe we were set up for a real stretch battle here. That stretch battle never materialized. Epicenter was too good. Cyberknife, of course, made his bones in the Haskell in his previous start, and he was able to be aggressively ridden from the inside post under Florent Giroux, and he sets a fair pace up front with the Prairie Meadows invader Ain't Life Grand providing some token pressure. This is the Travers, of course, though. All the good three-year-olds were here, including Kentucky Derby winner Rich Strike, Preakness winner Early Voting. Early Voting didn't run well. In fact, he didn't run well at all, and he's now going to the breeding shed. Uh, yeah, early voting totally bombed in this race, and we're not going to see him again. Um, but this is, you know, he's right alongside Epicenter right now. They're both just stalking the leaders. Um, Cyberknife, I thought, got the, a really good ride from the rail. He went forward. He made the lead. He went on with it. He's going to start to stretch away here around the second turn. But Epicenter's right behind him, Dan. And you can just tell at this point that Epicenter probably has a little bit too much horse. He comes strongly to the outside, and he goes right by. He goes right by. You're right. It was for a second appearing that there might be a battle, but Epicenter ran right by a good horse in Cyberknife, stays about his business, wins by over five lengths in the stretch in professional fashion, and perhaps most impressively, he earned his career best buyer speed figure by far, jumping up 10 points to a 112. This is a horse, Mike, who went into the Kentucky Derby as the consensus best three-year-old in the country. He had a little bit of a hiccup in the Derby, obviously, when being upset by Rich Strike, and a little bit of a hiccup in the Preakness when being beaten by early voting. Since then, he's done nothing wrong. He's the top dog of the three-year-old division. He's going to the Classic for Steve Asmussen, where, unfortunately for him, perhaps, flight line awaits. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of good older horses waiting for him. That's as it should be. Um, Epicenter, you know, has not faced older horses as of yet. They did not um, elect for a, a final prep race after this Travers that we just watched. They'll go in there with a fresh horse um, coming off of a career best performance, that career best performance at a mile and a quarter, and it'll take on some really, really good older horses, at least a couple of them, Dan. It's going to be very interesting to see how he stacks up because, yeah, he was the best early three-year-old. Um, I think he... I think most people still probably thought of him as the best three-year-old, even though he didn't win the Derby or the Preakness. Um, he's clearly improved in, in his two starts since that little layoff, though. And when he breaks from the gate, as you saw in the run, Happy Travers, he does have the tactical speed to place himself wherever the rider wants. And in the Classic, there should be a fast pace with flight line and life is good. Maybe Epicenter is a horse that could take advantage. Cyberknife, I would expect to be cross-centered in both the Classic and the Dirt Mile. And I won't be surprised at all if they decide to run him in the Dirt Mile. And that would be a very interesting spot for the Brad Cox trainee. Yeah, it will be interesting to see what they do with them. Uh, maybe they'll they'll elect to pass the classic. I, I don't know what I would think the right move to do there is, Dan. Um, you know, I know that he was in that race that we just watched there, uh, the Travers. They put him on the lead, but he's not a horse who has to be ridden forward um, to to show up with his best performance. He proved that in the Haskell um, when he won that race. So we'll see what they decide to do with him. Obviously, he's you know certainly a, a three year old is going to have to take a pretty significant step forward if he's going to be a real factor at the Breeders' Cup Classic. Cyberknife, of course, emerged from this race to run third in the Pennsylvania Derby. He swapped positions with Zandon, the third place finisher of the Travers. He ran second in the Pennsylvania Derby. Chad Brown says no Breeders' Cup for Zandon. Cigar Miles, the next spot. I don't mind them going shorter with Zandon. Uh, that's for sure, Dan. He's the horse who I think is at his best when they sit and make one run with him. Um, and he's just the horse who, you know, he, they've run him twice at a mile and a quarter. He ran fine in both of those races. 
Um, but it just didn't seem like that was his best distance. He really had dead aim um, on both the, the Travers and the Kentucky Derby after good trips, and he just couldn't get by. What to make a rich strike? He really didn't fire his best shot in the Travers. He was far from embarrassed in the race, and he came out of this race to run against older horses in the Lucas Classic, and he gave a good older horse, Hot Rod Charlie, a bit of a fight in that race. I'm assuming they're going on to the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic with Rich Strike. I guess he has a puncher's chance if the pace is electric up front and it falls apart. Uh, yeah, we've seen that uh, from Rich Strike before, right? Sitting out a really fast pace, working a clean run into it, pulling off a big upset. It feels like that's what would have to happen for him to to win the, the Breeders' Cup Classic. Um, I guess we'll see if it materializes for him. I, I've heard that his connections are also considering not going to the Breeders' Cup and running the Clark. Um, so we'll see what they decide to do. Let's take a closer look at Epicenter, trained by Steve Asmussen, Joe Rosario, aboard in the Travers. He's banked almost $3 million, the son of not this time. He's handled a mile and a quarter. He is a hearty horse that handles racing. He has tactical speed. And the last buyer speed figure of 112, while it doesn't put him in the vicinity of flight line, it puts him among, if not second best, among just about everybody else in the race. Uh, do you think he has another forward move in him after 10 starts? Yeah, why not? I mean, I don't I don't think it's, there's any reason to assume we've seen the best uh, that Epicenter has to offer at this point. Um, he It feels like he probably will have to take one more step forward at the Breeders' Cup, but I don't see why he couldn't do that. Here are the prices for the run happy Travers. Epicenter was your even money favorite, returned four hours on the nose. Cyberknife, the Haskell winner, was second. Zandon, yet another good performance completes the 618 trifecta epicenter onto the Breeders' Cup Classic, onto facing older horses for the first time, onto facing flight line. 